What's up, Guiding Bolt fans? Nick here, and today we're going to be taking a look at 1985 Games' newest release of map pieces called Hell and High Water. Now, this is the second volume. You can see here that on my left I have Volume 1 Dungeon Craft, and if, you're, uh, if you want to see what is in here, go ahead and check out my other review, which I'll link in this video. There's over a thousand pieces in here, and it has been an amazing resource. So that's why I am super excited to crack into the newest release and show you what it has to offer as well. Now, who would pick these up? I would say any dungeon master that is artistically impaired, like myself, these are an amazing resource. Also, if you are thinking of or are in the middle of running either a Descent into Avernus or a Ghost of Saltmarsh, um, this one is really useful because it has a lot of ships in there. There's Infernal War Machines and just a bunch of really cool scenery that you can use to really bring your adventure to life. Um, volume 1 is more based on, uh, it's got a lot of um, you know, villages and, not, not villages, but like uh, buildings and stuff like that in it. Uh, trees, forests, um, caves, stuff like that. So anyways, if you want to know what's in here, check out the review. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside this box. Now you do see down here that this is, uh, or these map pieces are compatible or they work well with wet and dry erase markers. I did test that out on volume one. I assume they're gonna be, that the second box is gonna be exactly the same. It, uh, you can draw on them pretty easily and it comes off super easy as well without ruining the pieces. So I really like that feature. Let's go ahead and flip this around so we can take a look and see what's inside the box or get an idea anyways before we crack into it. So you can see here that this includes demons, lava, ships, islands, pirates, infernal machines, sunken treasure, and more. Now specifically what I am interested in is the ships and the infernal machines uh, because they're probably the hardest to draw and obviously if you're riding around, if your PCs are riding around on a ship or an infernal machine, it's nice to be able to navigate them around the map for battles. So there's a couple of different examples here on the on the back of the box. There are over 880 pieces in here. This is, uh, again, the seafaring and hellscape map pieces are what's in the box. So enough uh, blabbing. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what is inside. First off, there is a little how to use sheet. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Cut out the pieces, put them on the battle, battle mat. If you flip it over to the back side, there is a little thank you here from the folks over at 1985 Games for uh, thanking us for purchasing their product. And I would like to say thank you back for putting this product out there. And then we get into the meat of it. So there is a, when you first open this up, these are in a little plastic shrink wrap that you'll have to take them out of. I've already done that just to make, the, make this go a little bit smoother. You guys don't need to watch me tearing into plastic. Unless you want to watch me do that, then let me know down in the comments and I'll make a video where all I do is open things up and don't actually show you what's in the box. <laughs> but anyways, we have the first piece here. You can see that uh, it kind of starts out, it's in two sections. The first section is all of the seafaring pieces and then we move into the, um, into the hellscape pieces. So right here we have a, starts off with a nice ship. Looks like there's a couple of rowboats down here, a bunch of uh, debris and stuff that you can cut out. Now, the ships, there are all different sizes. This is one of the smaller ones. And uh, to get an idea of which ones you would use these in, in salt marsh, check out Appendix A. It kind of gives you different sizes. So you can look at the sizes of boats and then kind of use these based on the sizes. So like the galley is this massive, I think it's like 20 feet by 130 feet. We'll actually see one of those in here. Um, so I flipped this over, you can see that the ship is on fire. This is the uh, this is the galley here. You can see here that it's going to have a front, back, and uh, middle section. So there is the back section. There's the middle section. Flip this around, and then here is the front section. So if we actually let's go ahead and put this out on the map here. Let's scoot this. Let's scoot that back a ways. Just to give you an idea of what we're uh, what we're dealing with here. So check out check out the size of this ship. I mean that thing is just huge. You'd probably do an entire session or two just sitting on that ship having a battle. It's so big. 
All right, so that's the biggest one. Uh, let's let's keep uh, going through these pieces here and see what else we got. So here we have looks like some coral life, more ships on fire, and this is I mean this uh, the material that they've printed these on is really it's kind of like a harder card stock and you can see it's like super glossy so that's what allows it to work well with the uh, wet and dry erase marker. I mean these are really in. The artwork on these is pretty good as well. This really, they really look nice. It's really sharp imagery. Really happy with the uh, with what they've done here. They really have put out a really good product for a very reasonable price. So, like I said, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna spend too much time on each of these. I just want to show you what the box has to offer. So that's that's through the ship section, or at least the uh, the non-wrecked ships. This is like a uh, little island here. You can see there's a little shack with a dock coming out of there, so that's kind of cool. I also thought that maybe you could use these little islands, like you could use them as floating earth moats, and I'm surprised they didn't pitch it that way as well, because that would be how I would use it. Here we got another ship. Looks like that's pretty much the same size as the first one we saw. A bunch of different docks. There's like, there's some uh, ones that are in uh, disrepair. It looks like or in need of a little TLC. Looks like there's just a floating log there. Maybe your PCs could do a log roll. Is there any lumberjacks in the party? <laughs> so look at this. I like this big whirlpool. That's pretty cool. Definitely would use that. More docks. Here we got some uh, sunken treasure and bones. That's under the water. This is really cool too. So in addition to having your, uh, you know, the ships that are still able to float, you also have some ruin, some ruins here that would be underneath water. You can see that they already have. There's like some barnacle growing on them, some starfish. Looks like some different algae and kelp right there. So that's pretty cool. Got some cages with skeletons in them. Looks like there's some sea monsters you can use if you don't have miniatures. I could see those being useful if you didn't already have a bunch of miniatures. Just cut these out and use them instead for the uh, combats. Or if you were going to, uh, I guess if you were hosting a session someplace other than your own, than your own place and you didn't want to bring pack up all your miniatures and bring them over to wherever you were hosting at. You could just bring these instead. Looks like we got some zombie sharks here. So you could uh, throw those in that whirlpool, have a Sharknado going on. There's another massive, just a huge ship, sunken ship. Some statues, looks like some ruby minotaurs or something. Got some rafts there. Here we go. Check out this sea turtle. I would definitely use this. I forget what the uh, on the, the island of Schultz there is uh, in that one bay. It's guarded by a sea turtle. I would definitely use this there. I don't have a miniature this big, unfortunately. It'd be awesome if I did. Uh, so I'd totally use this here just to really emphasize how uh, how big this thing is that they're dealing with. <laughs> right? They'll think twice about sassing off to that. We've got some clams, giant clams. More sea monsters, and then this is uh, this gets us into the uh, hellscape map pieces. So that's some looks like a cool building, some sort of glowing crystal in there. There's lots of different map pieces with ruins and stuff that's on fire. So you still may need to draw a little bit of stuff, but I would just use these as like difficult terrain. So if your PCs are moving through them, maybe it costs them two movement or doubled movement points to get through there. Some circular ruins, bunch of stuff on fire. That's a really big ruin there. Looks like we got some walkways. Oh, some walkways with carnage on them. A bunch of blood and stuff smeared all over there. These are... I, I couldn't quite tell what these were when I had saw them previously. It looks like it's... I almost think some of them are maybe like fl 
floating around like these may be actual actual earth motes that are floating down in Avernus because I know there's a few different floating pieces down there like this one right here's got there's like a ladder and stuff coming off of it maybe like Zeriel's warship or something like that you could piece these together it does have big uh, like some active ruins on them it looks pretty cool got some different uh, different monsters and stuff maybe a, I'm not sure if that's like a harpy or an Aaron yes there some dead trees with blood on them kind of looks like the tree out of Game of Thrones nice little arena pit looks like this one's suspended in the air by a bunch of big chains that are kind of holding it kind of cool to have a battle scene on there where the chains are like breaking did I show you the back side? Yeah, I did. Another big arena. This one's pretty cool. Looks like the bones of a, I'm assuming a dragon or some other massive beast. There's uh, there's some with a little bit of carnage. A little bit of meat still on the bone. <laughs> some more monsters. Looks like a fire elemental. elemental. Maybe a Baelor, earth elemental. I think that's, uh, what is that thing called? A Shateen? I know it's a demon. Pretty sure it's a demon. Looks like we got some rib cages there. Some ribs with meat on the bone. Some lava. A bunch of piles of skeletons. Treasure. These ones are kind of cool. These are uh, just lava pits. And there are ones in here as well. Yeah, here we go. So you got either lava, or I'm guessing this is either a, you could call it a pool of blood, I guess. Maybe just a body of tainted water due to the uh, due to the location. I would maybe, there are some in here that seem to flow. Maybe call it like the river sticks or something like that. So you got demons and stuff crawling out of here. Be a pretty cool idea. But as you can see, there are just a ton of different map pieces that you can use here. And I'm sure as I'm flipping through these, you're thinking about how you can possibly use these in your adventure. And the best part is, I mean, the hardest part about using these is cutting things out once they're out and you're golden. All you got to do is slap them down on the battle grid and arrange them in whatever, whatever way works for you. Here we go. These are uh, cool ones. This is the Infernal War Machines here. So uh, I like that there's different sized ones. You can see here's like the single, maybe one to two riders. You could maybe get a crew of uh, maybe four people on this one. And then this is just a massive Infernal War machine there. So these would be really useful during the um, Mad Maggie chase where I think the Kenku are chasing you through the uh, first level of hell. There's like a massive Infernal War machine. I think... Uh, Whatever that Rakshasa's name is, you can maybe call that his, where that trading post is. It might not be big enough. It would be cool. I don't think that there's, I don't think that there's two of these in here, but if you had two of these side by side, that would almost, almost give you the look and feel of that massive um, war machine that kind of totes everybody around and appears in different locations. It's like we're all the, it's like the trading bazaar. There is a... Looks like a ship made out of bones floating on lava, so that's pretty cool. Bone walkways. I like that one even more. That one's pretty cool. Just like some little islands in the lava. Little walkways. Looks like it's like a big chunk of rock there. Some random treasure sprinkled in. And this looks to be our last piece. So there you have it. As you can see, this is, uh, they've really done a good job here. Super, uh, super high detail on these pieces. It is durable card stock. You'll be able to use these again and again. You can use them with wet and dry erase marker. I mean, it's literally that simple. Again, anybody that is artistically impaired, pick these up. They are such a time saver. Um, it's gonna be a, a thousand times better. <laughs> 
<laughs> experience for your players walking around in something like uh, that has with these uh, map pieces than something that you've uh, chicken scratched out onto the battle mat. So hopefully you found this uh, informative and helpful and uh, saw some pieces in here that you can use with your adventure. I will uh, post a link to um, link down below on where you can pick these up. I don't know if it's available on Amazon. If it is, I'll provide an affiliate link. Uh, if you want to support the channel, go ahead and use that. We get a small, uh, small portion of the sale. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Otherwise, uh, if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave that down below. Uh, please remember to subscribe. If you, uh, We put out weekly content, so if you want to keep up with what we're up to, that is how you do it. Thanks for watching, and until next time. <laughs>